Hello Gamer and welcome to Chapter 5 of How to Stream. This week I want to talk about how big the gaming industry is on a global scale. Because most people are unaware of how massive this industry really is or how many people that are considered to be gamers. There are going to be lots of numbers in this chapter just to give you some perspective. So bear with me. I will write down all the facts, uh, all the sources uh, in the description box below. So one third of humanity is considered to be gamers. They play some kind of video games, which amounts to about two and a half billion people. We have been playing games since the dawn of times. And now we have traded us sticks and stones for advanced sports and video games. Before, we could only play with uh, friends that were physically close to us. But now, thanks to the internet, we can play with friends from all over the world in real time. So our fun network has increased to massive levels. It is also much more common today uh, to play with random people than it was before, which is great. The reason two-thirds are not playing video games is probably because they have other priorities and even economical challenges. Uh, if you just look at this picture, you can understand a little bit what I'm talking about. The average monthly income inside the wall of the West is around 2,500 euros. However, outside, where 86% of the Earth's population lives, it's just 150 euros. So not all people can afford a new mobile phone that can handle modern games. I mention this because mobile phones are important for they account for half of the global, global gaming revenue with about 63 billion dollars. So today you can play games on almost all devices that have a screen. I can even play games on my watch. And it's not only kids who play games. Two-thirds uh, of the gamers are 18 years old or older. Uh, women also play as much as men do, but people just don't play the same type of games for different reasons. So most of us are obviously leisure gamers. But as in all popular activities, the best practitioners can have rich careers. In the gaming world, these professional individuals are part of something called eSports, which is the competitive side of uh, gaming. I'm going to talk more about eSports and what makes it click uh, in the next chapter next week. Gamers of the world spent together around $135 billion on gaming in 2018, which is on the same level as the global box office, so this is Hollywood and Bollywood, and the global uh, home entertainment industry made combined. So surprisingly for me, uh, consoles like PlayStation and Xbox had the biggest revenue growth 2019 with over 13%. I'm also looking forward to see what will happen with Google Stadia, which is the new type of playing where you play through the cloud uh, without any exp expensive hardware, and if it will re revolutionize uh, the industry. Because I think there is a great chance for that if they just tweak a few, thi few things like subscriptions or, and similar. I will put a link below for those who don't know what Google Stadia and, and cloud gaming is. More and more games have or are only multiplayer games. The reasons are mostly for how I see it. First off, there is often more money there. Secondly, everyone is getting better internet. And thirdly, there is always something new happening. No game is like the last one, especially in Battle Royale games like Fortnite and PUBG. And lastly, we are social animals. We rather play with each other than uh, alone. But how, imagine if uh, single-player games like Witcher 3 uh, were made as co-op. You would have a whole other dimension to it. 
Good example of this is how GTA Online Grand Theft Auto made a big business of a single player game which continues to grow online. When I was a kid you went to the game store and you bought a disc with your game, but today Many game creators are, are um, getting paid in more indirect ways. You still have the pay up front model to play like games like Minecraft, but in the digital world, free to play games with in game uh, purchases like Fortnite uh, are dominating. We also have subscription games like RuneScape or World of Warcraft. On console, there is also one more dimension. If you want to play your purchased or free-to-play game online, uh, you have to subscribe on that console's live service. This costs around $50 per year via Xbox Live uh, or PlayStation Plus, depending, of course, which console you're using. If we look more at where the money comes from, we can see that 82% of the digital games revenue comes from free-to-play games. Only Fortnite has around 250 million accounts active, and in 2018 they had a revenue of around two and a half billion dollars, which is not bad for a game that is free to play. PUBG Mobile, however, has uh, 400 million players, which crushes even Fortnite. But they're not as good as Epic Games, who created Fortnite at earning money. Epic Games are really good at building promotions together with popular movie franchises, for example, and other things. The biggest free-to-play game of all, a game called Crossfire, is uh, highly popular in China with around 660 million registered accounts. It's a, a first-person shooter similar to Counter-Strike. Did you know that Tetris is actually the best-selling pay downloaded game of all time with over 500 million co sold copies? It is followed by Minecraft that has 170 million and another 100 million players that play for, for free in China. I read a report from Cisco, which is the world's leading network equipment manufacturer and whose hardware is the, the backbone of the internet, uh, where they showed how worldwide online gaming traffic reaches 4 exabytes per month in 2019 and is expected to more than double in 2022. So how much is 4 exabytes? It's uh, 4 billion gigabytes, right? How much is that? What can we compare it to? Well, it's not easy because the number is so big, but it has been said that 5 exabytes would be the equal to all of the words ever spoken by mankind. So why is all this happening? So many reasons. Digital downloads are increasing uh, parallel to people getting faster internet speeds at home. And at the same time, larger storages on their PlayStations and Xboxes, which let people store more games. If cloud gaming explodes, then this number will go up exponentially. Cisco predicts that if this happens, it will become one of the largest internet traffic categories. All you will need is a fast uh, fiber internet connection at home and a big screen. So finally, the age of gaming has just started and we will see lots of things happening here in the coming years. During Christmas and New Year, I played Witcher 3 with all DLCs while waiting for the Netflix series. And I streamed all of that live, something that I really wasn't alone in doing. More people played the game this Christmas than when it launched in 2005, uh, 2015, which shows how series and games can help each other out. Just look at the Avengers movies. In the end game, Thor played Fortnite in their epic final movie, which just tells you all you need to know. That kid on the TV just called me a dickhead again. Noob Master. Yeah, Noob Master 69. Called me a dickhead. This. Noob Master, hey, it's Thor again. You know, the God of Thunder? Listen, buddy, if you don't log off this game immediately, I'm gonna fly over to your house, come down to that basement you're hiding in, rip off your arms and shove them up your butt! Oh, that's right, yes, go cry to your father, you little weasel! Thank you, Thor. Hey, let me know if he bothers you again, okay? Thank you very much, I will. So, friends, uh, that's all I wanted to say today. Don't forget to follow the links below to read more about this, and until next time, Adiós.